Hello and welcome to this video tutorial and today I'm going to show you how you can use border brushes in Photoshop to create borders for your photos. We're going to start with a sort of lacy edge brush so let's go to Chrome and just see what we're looking at. These are decorative vintage frame brushes and there's six in the set. Now these are brushes you'll need to download them to your downloads folder. Having done that inside Photoshop you need to install them. In the most recent version of Photoshop that's relatively easy if you click on the brushes first of all, click the drop down list here and go to the fly out menu. If you choose import brushes then you're taken automatically to the location where Photoshop expects your brushes to be. On a PC that is in your user folder so this is Helen for me it'll have your name there or whatever you use or you're using app data roaming Adobe Adobe Photoshop whatever version you're using I'm using 2018 here and the presets brushes folder I'm going to keep that on the screen as I go to my downloads folder when you download those brushes they're going to come in a zip file you'll double click on the zip file and then choose to extract all files now I've already done that and here are my vintage frame brushes so inside this folder are the brushes that I need to install and what I can do is just drag them into this folder here now I want to make a copy of them as I do so I'm holding down the control key to make a duplicate now these vintage frame brushes are installed where Photoshop expects them to be installed and next time I launch Photoshop, Photoshop's going to find them and put them in the list. This time they're not in the list so I'm going to select them and load them just so they're going to be accessible to me. And they're now going to appear here in the bottom of the brushes panel so when I just scroll down you can see here are the brushes so we're going to select one of these to use. So I'll choose frame 2. Now it's too big so I'm going to use the open and close square brackets to resize it. In actual fact the open square bracket will make it smaller and that's going to suit me just fine. I'm going to press the letter D so I get the default colors. I'm just going to flip those around because I want my frame to be white. I'm also going to put it on a separate layer so I can manipulate around it. So I'm going to click to add a new layer. I'm going to hold my mouse over my portrait pick the place that I want to frame and I'm just going to click once. With some brushes if you click a couple of times in the exact same location you'll get a sort of deeper depth of color so you might want to try that in particular if your brushes are a little bit light but this one's just fine so I'm going to just get out of using that because it's just a little bit annoying. I'm going to turn this background layer into a regular layer. You can do it any number of ways. One of them is to double click on it. In the most recent versions of Photoshop you can just click on the lock icon and that unlocks it. What I want to end up with is a solid background outside the edge of this photo and then I want the girl's face in the middle and I want the background to come through the leaves. So we've got quite a little bit of work to do. At this point I'm going back to this layer here and I'm going to the magic wand tool and I'm going to set it on to contiguous. That means that when I click out here we're going to select everything on the outside area here but nothing on the inside. This is the area I want to remove from the photo so I'll come back down here to the photo and just press delete. At this stage it would be really handy to put our background in place so I'm going to deselect the current selection by pressing Ctrl or Command D or you can choose Select Deselect. I'll hold the Ctrl key on a PC command on a Mac as I click on the new icon just to add a new layer. If you add a new layer in the wrong place you can just drag it into position. I'm going to select a color from the image so I'll choose the eyedropper tool and I just want a sort of bright greenish color here so I've selected my color with this layer now targeted I'll press alt backspace option delete on a Mac to fill the layer with this green color. The next thing I want to do is to remove the photo color from inside the leaves here. I just want to be able to see the background of the frame through there. So I'll go back to my border layer. I'm going back to my magic wand tool. 
I'm going to deselect contiguous. This is really important whether you have contiguous selected or not. It's going to be the difference between this working and not. So I don't want to select contiguous, which means when I click outside here, I'm going to select every single transparent pixel in this entire layer. That's the area that we've already removed, plus all these other areas. At this point, what I need to do is to remove the area that is covering the girl's face from this selection because at the moment, if I just go down here and press delete, I'm going to lose her and that's not what I want to happen. So I'm just going to undo that, go back to this layer that we're working on and I need to deselect this area. To do that, I'm going to turn contiguous back on. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and just click once on the inside here and that's going to deselect this area on the inside of the frame. Now let's go to the little girl layer and press delete. And what's going to happen is that just the areas of the photo inside the flower here are going to be removed. I'll press Ctrl and Command D to deselect the selection. And you can see that we've now got the frame looking the way I want it to look, but it doesn't have a lot of dimension. It's a little bit difficult to see. We can solve that problem by just adding a very small drop shadow to the brush layer. We'll click here on the FX icon and choose Drop Shadow. I'm going to reduce the opacity down really quite low. You could also select a green color here. So we could go and select the green from the image and then choose a darker version of that for our shadow. It might be a little bit softer of in effect. You can adjust the distance. The larger the distance, the more it looks like it's separated from the paper. So I want it to be fairly close to the paper. A little bit of a spread, maybe one or two pixels and maybe about eight or 10 for the size. That's all you need for this drop shadow effect. But let's have a look and see how it is working when I turn the preview on and off. This is off and this is on. So it's just giving it a little bit of dimension. I'll click OK. We'll finish off by cropping the image. So I'll go to the crop tool and I'm just going to drag in and crop pretty close to the edges of the image, but just squaring it up nicely. So there's how to use one type of border brush on your photos in Photoshop. And these are the kind of border brushes that have some detail inside them as well as on the outside. For our second example as to how you might work with border brushes, let's say the brushes that I'm going to be using. These are different border brushes. They tend to be the kind that you could extend to be very edge brushes with the photo in the middle. So you're going to download those and install them exactly the same way as you installed the others. Now I've already gone ahead and done that. So let's go to the brushes panel. We're going to find them at the very bottom and I'm going to select one of them. I'm actually going to select this one that is in landscape orientation, even though I'm working with an image that is in portrait orientation. The first thing I need to do is to rotate this brush. So I'm going over here to the brushes panel and I'm going to change the angle to 90. That's going to ensure that the brush is rotated so it's a portrait orientation brush. It's much better to do that than to try and squash these into perspective later on. So having done that, I'm just going to click away from this dialog and I want to shrink this brush a bit. So I'm going to use the open and close square bracket keys. I just want to get this brush so that it's inside the image, but only just inside. And I don't really mind right now that it's a little bit short. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to target the new layer. I'm going to paint with black. So I've got black as my foreground color. I'm just going to click once on the image just to paint my brush down, making sure that it's inside the image. Now I'm going to the move tool click on this layer and now I can adjust it so I can drag upwards. If I add the Alt or Option key, I'll be stretching this in this direction so I can move it over the edge of the image. I'm just going to bring this down the bottom here. Let's go out to the sides here and out to the sides here. And that's giving us one possible result from this frame where we're using it to sort of get rid of the outside edges of the image. Now, of course, if you wanted it to be white or another color, you could make it so. 
but you don't actually need to change this layer. What you could do is put a new layer on top of everything. So I'm just going to add a new layer on top of everything. I'm going to fill it with white by pressing Control Backspace Command Delete on the Mac. I'm going to create a clipping mask. So I'm going to clip this solid filled layer to the layer below. I'm going to target this layer and choose Layer, Create Clipping Mask. And that creates a clipping mask, allowing us to adjust this layer, but have a different color on top. And whatever color this layer is, that's what we're going to see the frame as being. So that's another way of possibly coloring a frame like this. You don't have to actually change the color on this layer. You could just add a solid fill layer on top and create a clipping mask with it. The final brush that we want to look at here is one from that most recent brush set. So let's just go to the brushes panel. Let's go and get this brush. And the ones I'm looking at are these two, which are solid brushes. So I'm going to select one of them and just click away. I'm going to adjust its size a little bit before I paint it onto a new layer. I think this time I'm going to stretch it because I'm going to show you how we could stretch it to make it a little bit wider. We'll go to the brushes panel here. You see it's got a roundness option on it here. Well, we can reduce the roundness of this brush. So let's take it down to say 90% and then let's just increase the size of the brush. So I'm going to click away from this dialog so that I can use my open and close square brackets. So by adjusting roundness, and you can choose anything between, I think it's 10 and 100% for this, by making the brush a little less round, if you like, you can squeeze it up so that you can enlarge it overall. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go back to our layers palette, make sure we're working on a layer all by itself. And I'm just going to click to apply the brush to this layer. Now we can use this as a clipping mask. Now this brush has a little bit of transparency in it. You might be able to see up here that it's sort of a little bit semi-transparent. That's going to work to our favor. I'm going to unlock this background layer. That's my image layer. Move it above the brush layer and then create my clipping mask there with layer, create clipping mask. You can see there's a little bit of transparency through the image here. And we can capture that by adding a white filled layer at the bottom. So I'm just going to control or command click on this new layer icon to add a brand new layer. White is my background color. So I'll press control backspace, command delete on the Mac to fill this with white. You could, of course, fill it with any color. You can fill it with black. And you're going to get a slightly different look with this black coming through. I actually think it looks better with white. So there's another way that you could use these border brushes. There are lots of possibilities. They're just some techniques that will help you be able to use them in your own images. I'm going to give you download links for both those brush sets. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. You learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. Please, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, my name is Helen Bradley and thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel.